Hello everybody! We welcome you to Season 2 of the Octane Outlaws. We are getting things underway in qualifying here at Daytona. We are going to be going 200 miles, which is uh, 80 laps for us here. Right now we're doing some qualifying following around Corey Buchanan. We'll watch uh, as he tries to set a quick lap here. Uh, tonight we have a pretty good sized grid. We're looking at uh, 20 drivers so far in the lobby. So we will be a busy race tonight. Um, let's get some race information up here for you guys though. Um, we're going to be learning some new driver names. A lot of old driver names here though. Uh, in the Octane Outlaws, we have Curtis Rogers, Zach Steele, uh, Michael... Aldrich, a new name, Doug Easel, new name, Max Ford, um, Corey Buchanan, one of our admins here that we're following around right now, uh, David Guimont, Garrett Streets, Noah Miller, Joshua Smith, Jimmy Emos, uh, George Buck, Jason uh, Heaney, Heaney, I'll have to get Jason's name down a little bit better, I'll have to ask him in Discord, but we'll say Jason Heaney for tonight, Trevor Bins, Jer Jeremy Morrow, um, Tommy Thompson, Joe Barry, Richard Kreuzer, Joshua O'Brien, and Chris Puff. And I have asked before if he is related to Mrs. Puff. And he said he is. And that his mom is opening up a second driving school. So, driving school set aside. Let's see what Corey Buchanan can do here. Aldrich setting the first lap. 49-1-8. Corey down low on that line. And you'll see a lot of drivers go out late. Uh, try and get, you know, whatever extra grip that the, the first driver's set down. Um, but Corey Buchanan riding that low line. Trying to get path of least resistance. The shortest distance from point A to point B. Um, you'll see a lot of drivers on their very first lap will go as high as they can to try and uh, get up to speed as uh, as much as they can before they shoot it on out down low on the line like Corey is right now and he is coming across the line Mr. Buchanan is up into fifth with a nice sturdy 49.25 Noah Miller one of our top runners from last season from Melbourne, Florida. Season two in the Octane Outlaws. We love saying that. Season one went fantastic. Noah Miller sticking low, hugging that yellow double line as he comes across. Miller stays sixth in identical time to Buchanan. Um, yeah, identical down to the 100th, 49.25 and 49.25 for Miller and Buchanan. Let's see Guimont, be where he is, changed up my camera. He's on his out lap. Let's see somebody who is a little farther along streets. Thompson, he is coming down that low line, so he must be on his fast lap. What up, Dakota? What's up, Mr. I believe that's Zachary Steele here. Mr. Unfinished Bread. How's everybody doing out there in the uh, world of Octane Outlaws? We're doing great up here in the booth. I said some new names to learn, but um, looking like we're going to have a little mix up in the field. Uh, we don't have coffee. Uh, we don't have Alex coffee as of right now, at least. Um, we don't have... I don't believe we have Blaine Wilson. We don't have Wilson either. So uh, two of our top three finishers of last season are not here. Uh, Noah Miller, I believe, was our number three driver. But yeah, we're uh, we're getting things underway pretty quickly. Tommy Thompson, good time right there. 49.27, good enough for seventh. And only, you know, a couple hundredths, a couple one thousandths, uh, you know, Separating these top drivers from top to bottom, two one hundredths. Or two tenths, sorry. Roberg has a very cool scheme. Well, we can't see Roberg right now. 
We'll see him out on track once the race gets underway. We are six minutes into qualifying, so we're going to see a couple people that have been waiting to get out on track, getting out there. We have about half the field. We're going to follow Richard Kreuzer right now. Man, we don't have Dakota right now. Missing that number 11 car on the grid. Uh, Wilson and Coffee. I'm not so sure if they signed up this season. But yeah, Wilson and Coffee, uh, teammates from last season. They uh, they just aren't out on track. Seeing uh, new number 11, the Farmers here, Max Ford. And he was with us last season. I'm not sure if they're doing trucks. Um, that is something that I myself will be joining on Saturdays, and every so often we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing a broadcast from WA Broadcasting to try and get the truck series out there. Um, follows the same schedule as the next gens here, so we will see what the the truck schedule has in store for us. If it has a bigger field, same field, um, but as of right now, we're still waiting on quite a few people to get their laps down. Jason Heaney. Hooters car there. He's a new uh, a new name to the to the grid here. Trevor Bins coming around right behind. Quaker State number three. Bins is down in fourteenth. We got to see the 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 puff right here Pika Kansas hometown first season in the octane outlaws for puff 84 bush car you see he's doing that strategy staying up high by that white line you want to stay up high hit that uh Ooh, he's going down low a little bit. Hit that, uh, you know, the most track that you can. Give yourself the most run up to that that uh, that line. And there goes Heaney up to first. And Puff. Well, that, this must be his outlap. We're going to check Heaney. Heaney's slowing down right now, but he jumps up to first. 49.17. Ford is tied with him. And Aldrich is tied with him. All three drivers tied right now for fastest lap one thing I didn't do I apologize for this I did not show or I did not send out the uh, us going live today so we're going to do that Throw that in Discord for everybody. Throw it in a couple other Discords here too. And hopefully we don't have too much when it comes to... Uh, ooh. That might be a little loud. Too much when it comes to loud noises. In the background here, we're in a new place, new house. Um, we're going to be hearing some new noises. Sub pump near me. We got uh, kids upstairs screaming. So hopefully that all is drowned out by the uh, amazing sound of these engines starting up here in just a moment. As of right now, we will check out our grid. Let's get a better view. We'll go blimp. These guys gridding up currently. We're going to jump to who is up there. We have O'Byron or O'Brien, sorry, O'Brien up on the grid. He's in a Chevy. Top four are Chevys, followed by two Fords, a Chevy, a Ford, a Chevy. Uh, only one Toyota this season in Jimmy Emos, and he is in the back in the 98 machine in 20th position out of 21. We'll see how things pan out here. 
gonna be a long race 80 laps we have stages at lap 20 and lap 45 we'll throw the race information back up here for you guys daytona international speedway right now we're 64 degrees out on track a uh, five mile an hour wind uh, 46 percent precipitation 65 per, uh, degree track temp so same as the air practically and we're at the two and a half mile track length and we're here at the beach um, we're gonna have a fun time tonight it is going to be a blast getting things kicked off but for now we're just waiting for everybody to grid up and for us to get moving another 20 seconds and we'll be underway here and I am not quite sure what our our fuel strategy is. I believe last season it was 15 to 20 laps on fuel. Um, somewhere in there. And it is going to be uh, a fun time to try and guess how these guys are going to go. Because they, um, they have their three sets of tires. Um, no going three wide early on in these races, especially the super speedways. Uh, I want to say it's two or three laps in. They can go three wide. But uh, we're going to see how we do. Last season's Daytona 500, uh, or Daytona 200, lasted quite a while. We had quite a few cautions, but the field was learning each other. Brand new league and brand new season. But right now... We have some drivers that have been racing around each other for four or five months already. Um, so new guys in the mix, but see how this uh, plays out. Hooters car of Heaney out front. Ford right there next to him. Drivers are uh, going to be feeling the nerves of new season, new uh, new identities with the teams mixed up. Uh, don't know who's on what teams anymore, and you know it's going to be it's going to be a fun time. Let's go number eight. That'd be Noah. Noah Miller, I believe. We're coming to the green, and here we go. Pitts have the pace car going down. Heaney has the green flag. Green, green, green. And green flag is out. There we go. Cars are off. Heaney gets a pretty good jump. But this is all about the draft. People are going to see how people hold together. Drivers are going to be fighting for high line, low line. We're going to see which one ends up being the good one. And right away, we have a good jump from the number 11 of Ford. Um, and number 95 of O'Brien jumps down low, tries to get the, the front of that low line as we are getting things underway here in Daytona. Heaney getting a good push there down on the low line. But Ford has quite a bit of speed. Let's take a look at these guys' speed. Ford up on that high line. 190 already. Not even done with lap one. Holding together pretty good. Ford goes down. Ooh, wow. That was a, a gutsy move there by Steele, the number 29 machine. That was cutting it real fine. It says 02 on his car, but he says 29 in the... in the standings page here that I got, so... not quite sure what that's about. Zachary, you know better, you gotta run your number. Otherwise, how do we know that it is actually you? That top line falling back a bit, looks like... Might be Martin Roberg. Nope, that is Tommy Thompson on the top line. Top line falling back just ever so slightly. No, that's the number three of Trevor Bins. Just no one, no one pushing that top line. Everybody just 
Falling down. Looks like no. Miller gets on that top line. Number three, Trevor Bins is going to have to get up right behind him to try and make something happen. Thompson jumps up high. Ooh, but then drops back down. Well, Thompson has to make a decision. There he goes. Thompson uh, does jump in front of Noah Miller there. Got some good speed. They should be able to make something happen on the outside. And ooh. I don't know if that's a block going on or if they're just trying to get up to that high line with some of that wind blowing around there in that draft. Five mile an hour wind tonight. Ooh, and there we go. That's going to be a caution. Yep, full course yellow there. There's our first one. We got four laps in. Not too bad, not too bad. Drivers still getting used to each other. Couple coming into the <laughs> into the pits now, I guess. That was a pretty big pretty big uh wreck that we had there. Might not be a bad strategy to take some fuel now, even if you don't take uh Take tires, take some fuel, get yourself back out on track, and get things rolling again. And then you can last all the way to the end of the stage without having to pit. If a couple people end up doing that, that would be uh, probably be ideal. We see a couple people blinking right now on track. But Ben's in the pits. Not a great camera. There we go. Ben's in the pits. Thompson in the pits. They are getting a little bit of damage repaired, a little bit of fuel. Doesn't look like they took tires. Once again, they have three sets of tires here. Um, but at Daytona, you really don't burn off the, the rubber like you do at some of these other, uh, I don't want to say shorter tracks, but Daytona is quite big. Uh, Talladega is the same way, but some of these uh, tracks where you're having to use that brake, where you're throwing it in a little bit more, uh, I mean, this is just all about the draft and all about how you can get your car into a position at the end of the race. It's just, you know, survive as long as you can, get yourself into position. And then once you get yourself into that position at the end, that's when you make your push. You go three wide, four wide, you, you know, you need, it, it does matter having a team of people, um, but being able to have a team of, of people with you. Hehehe. <laughs> Yeah, Tommy's got the new killer paint along with Curtis. Yeah, I've, I've heard uh, Tommy's got some new paint here. I don't know. But we did that, uh, those graphics on there. Did an okay job. I've seen some better paints in my day. <laughs> jokes, jokes aside, one of our admin, Patrick, did the paints on uh, Tommy's and Curtis's. We do have quite a few people in the pits. O'Brien, Buchanan, Roberg, Barry, Curtis Rogers, who we were just talking about here. Oop, Curtis Rogers right there. Sitting in the pit lane. Looks like he did get a little bit of damage from that. Let's jump back and see what happened there. Because there was quite a bit that happened. You can see drivers just getting into each other. Yep, right there. And quite a few involved. I know we watched the car fly off to the left there, but quite a few cars involved. There's Rogers being one of them, as we were just looking at his car. Max Ford leading us still in the number 11 Farmer's Machine. Max Ford did race with us a few times at least last season. But as I was saying before, uh, team teammates are going to play a huge factor here at Daytona. Uh, it does help to have somebody with you on your team fighting for the same goal, which is get some team points, get some driver points. Um, you obviously want your, your teammates to do well. So you're going to try and push your teammate. Even if that means you don't get a win, you know, you'll happily take a second over finishing in the back. So... Helping your teammates out, you know, even if you have to fight for a win at the end, as long as you're not taking each other out. We did see that last season with Alex Coffey and uh, Blaine Wilson. I believe it was at Talladega. They were pushing, pushing, pushing at the end. Uh, Noah Miller was right there with them. And they made a move on the last lap, and Coffey just caught the back of Wilson. 
uh, a little bit. Everybody slid across the line. Miller got caught up. Wilson got caught up. Coffee got caught up. And they slid across the line together. And it was the most exciting finish we've had here in the Octane Outlaws. Because um, I didn't know who won until we took a look at it. And Noah Miller had won that race, who is right now running in fourth position. Noah doing a good job keeping his nose clean. Trying to get those tires warm up on that high side is Noah. But don't forget to share. Don't forget to uh, hit that little bell for notifications um, and subscribe to the WA Broadcasting Network. Uh, we will be doing all the Octane Outlaws, some of their next gen, or some all their next gen, some of their trucks. Uh, series and then uh, you know maybe some other series that pop up it depends on the nights and it depends on what the series are but look forward to more action coming in the octane outlaws leagues we will uh we'll definitely be covering as much as we can love seeing the action of all these cars pace cars down into the pit lane Max Ford has the start. There's a Geico start zone, and green flag, green he is flag. away. Ford has a good jump. But once again, that doesn't matter because everybody will be falling into the draft. Everybody stretches out. Hopefully we don't accordion too hard and come together a little bit of force there. Hopefully everybody files in and... Let's off the gas a little bit. There we go. Everybody just fall in line. Let's get a good couple of laps here going as we have Jason Heaney on the outside in Hooters number nine. Getting that push from Noah Miller. Yep, we are away. We're looking good. Let's keep an eye on this front pack. Looks like everybody's kind of falling in on that low line. Once again, you can try and take that high line. It might be a little bit uh, easier on your tires, a little harder to maintain, uh, just because you know you're, you're trying to maintain a line on that uh, that like black tar uh, in the middle there. A little black line in the middle of the track is what you normally reference, uh, or that white up along the edge there. And it's a little harder to do, a little harder to hold that line than holding a nice bright yellow double line on the inside so we'll see how everybody fares here Ooh, richard kreuzer gets up a little bit this tracks up the 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 race course there just the tiniest bit and here they come down the home stretch lap number eight kreuzer pushing a little little bit of a pack getting away from the drivers behind in fourth that is uh doug easel there and they're starting to catch back up. That draft didn't get away from them. But yeah, four or five cars look like they might be trying to escape the, the entire pack there. Because we have Curtis. Yellow, nope, yellow, Garrett. Yellow. Garrett Streets. Ooh, what happened back here? Rogers and Pitts. Ooh. What do we got going on? Jump to the back. See what happened. Ooh, three. Bumping, bumping, bumping. People avoiding. It looks like a false yellow was thrown here. Not false, but just premature. Just a little early on the yellow. That's okay. Max Ford going up. Waiting for them to catch up to the pace car. Oh, 
and we are yep, there we are behind the pace car here and we expect it here at Daytona for our drivers to be behind the pace car quite a bit but ooh, last second dive in there for the number 11 quite a few others going on by Hopefully they can make it to the end of Gimon going down too. Hopefully they can make it to the end of the stage. Lap number 11 right now. But only a few. Max Ford, the leader, coming down into pit lane. David Gimon coming down into pit lane. And Joshua O'Brien coming down into pit lane. Zachary Steele now leads us in 29 slash 02 machine. Um, <laughs> Corey's are right behind him. Easel right behind him in third. And this is what we've been waiting for, this, uh, this excitement of Daytona. Because Daytona, starting off the way that we do here at Daytona, uh, draft racing is, you know, restrictor plate racing is so much different than, you know, your regular, you know, mile and a half and then your short tracks. Each one has its, you know, its ins and outs and its little specialties. And it really does show that, you know, some people are really good at doing the Daytona races. They're really good at controlling that draft, controlling their position on track, knowing where they want to be, uh, knowing where they're comfortable on track to get to the end and then make their push. Whereas, you know, you do a short track, you're just trying to push the whole time. You do a mile and a half, you're trying to push the whole time. Um, but also trying to, you know, save some tires. Here, you know, you're not really saving tires. You're more just trying to concentrate on track position, um, trying to stay out of the big one. Which we've already seen a fairly, you know, fairly good wreck here on lap. Uh, I think that was lap four. And then, yeah, the uh, the mile and a half. Like, you, there's a lot of strategy that goes into saving those tires, and you know, really can play into uh, how a driver is going to uh, approach a race each <laughs> each week. You approach a, a mile and a half different than you approach a short track. A short track different than you approach uh, a road course, which we have quite a few road courses this season. I believe we have Sonoma and Watkins Glen on the schedule. But right now, we're double stacking so we can get going again. Zach Steele is going to lead us to the line. Here's our field. Looking at that Fanatec GT car. Corey's are on the outside. Hoping to get a push there from Noah Miller. But Max Ford in the back. He's uh, just going to be hanging out. You know, getting to the first stage here. Zachary Steele, number 29. Kinda. Up front. It's interesting to see the uh, the differences in cars. Fords, Ford, Chevy, Chevy, Ford, Chevy, Ford, Chevy, Ford, 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 Chevy, Chevy. So we have a lot of different, uh, you know, mix up of cars all throughout the field. And the only Toyota is in the pits and uh, shows out for the race. He has not completed a lap. So we are only at 20 drivers in the race currently. We will be coming to the line here. Just a moment. We see the end of the pit lane right there. Pace car will be diving in. There he goes. Into the start go zone goes Zachary Steele. And as we hear those engines rev up, there goes Zachary Steele. Did a pretty good jump out in front, but the field should pull up right behind him uh, he's just going to want to hang on to that low line and 
get some help from the guys on the, the inside line there to help push them and keep them up front. Uh, when you're up front, you avoid most wrecks um, unless you get bumped or, or pushed from the guy directly behind you. Oh, we're going three wide already. That is a no-no. Doug Easel flying on by. Ooh, getting a little shove. Yeah, we're, we're three wide. Zachary Steele is caught in that middle where there's kind of no man's land. Um, Zachary Steele trying to get back into a line, but the, just in that middle, you don't have any to, anybody to draft you. Uh, you're not getting pushed from behind, not getting pushed from the front, and it just makes for a really bad time because you have no draft, you have no airflow to help you along. Right now, Richard Kreuzer leading the race. No, Miller. Right behind him, giving a push, and Doug Easel behind him, giving a push. Ooh, we have somebody way in the back. Looks like Curtis Rogers. Maybe David Gimon. Yeah, that's Gimon in the back. He's having a hard time keeping up with the pack. He must have lost that draft. Kreuzer just touching that apron. He's going to want to keep off of that because that can throw you in an instant. Oh, Patrick says he can't hear. Is that a me problem or is that a uh, is that a you just have the volume down problem? Seal has 0-2-0-2. But Kreuzer is the one we're watching down on that inside line. That top line, we have a couple people pushing hard. Garrett Streets, Jeremy um, Morrow. And then down low, Jason Heaney. Uh, these two drivers up top got a really good push here. You're going to have the pack catch up to them, but they had a heck of a run. Garrett Streets, some new names. Streets, Moro, Heaney, all one, two, three right now. It looks like things will kind of settle out here. Once again, you just want to kind of be up front. And out of danger as much as you can be as we come down the back stretch. This is where all the drivers tend to bunch up a little bit. You see Zachary Steele pulls out. Oh, there we go. Another turned car. And that should pop a yellow. There we go. Yellow flag out. Ooh, somebody smacked the wall pretty hard. Heard that. See O'Brien here. Oh, yeah. Just catches the 22 and the 95. O'Brien's car just smacks into the wall at high speed. And let's see. Curtis Rogers here, who is the number 32. I heard somebody's engine explode. Let's see if we can't we can't get the gyro of who caused this is Heaney here who just gets shunted off the track. He stays out of it for the most part. Yeah, he's he's gonna be okay on damage. Ooh, a little bit maybe on the front uh, front bumper there, but yeah, that's that's a scary. Scary throw that he had there. See from Zachary Steele's perspective. Ooh, Zachary Steele just touches the inside back corner panel there. And yeah, wow. He just touches that corner panel. And at these speeds with the, the draft, you know, that's all it takes just to throw you on the inside. Doug Easel down here. Number 67. Stuck on our screen there. Look at some of these guys in the back. George Buck coming through. And 
Yeah, just... That incident happens in front, and then the other incident happens behind. With everybody checking up. Oh, and there it is. Joshua O'Brien. It's getting hit pretty bad. Let's jump back to live and yeah, you can see O'Brien has the front of his car gone. He's just trying to get to the pit lane, I can imagine. Still a couple laps here to go. O'Brien, his engine is not sounding good. We jump on board his helmet camera here. He is just coasting along, just trying to get to the pit lane. His spotter right now, looking on, hoping that he can limp it back to be able to get that fixed up because that is rough shape that he is in. Uh, the Octane Outlaws has two fast repairs, so hopefully uh, you're you're keeping clear of the damage throughout the race. But if you do get caught up like Mr. O'Brien does, you have two chances to go in and fix your car. So here he comes down pit lane. We should see that front end get slapped back on really fast. It looks like Aldrich is in the pits. Thompson in the pits behind him. There we go there. O'Brien. He takes tires on the out. We're going to be hitting our stage here. So the yellow will be a quote unquote yellow will be thrown. Um, even though we're under yellow already, but it will be thrown at the beginning of this. <laughs> so this will be the end of our stage. O'Brien just waiting for his car to be repaired. This is going to count as a stage, okay. So then I'm going to turn the stage off. Turn the stage off, and then we won't have another caution. This will be our stage right here. Uh, O'Brien must not have had his fast repair on, or he already used his two fast repairs, because he is having a hard time right now getting that damage uh, banged out of that car. He is struggling. We'll follow Ford and Barry. Joe Barry in number five on the outside. That Canada car. New to the grid. As we're about to go green here, green Ford flag, green flag. gets a good jump there. Green flag out, and Garrett Streets gets right up behind him. Big jump for Ford. I don't know. I'm not sure that uh, Joe Barry knew that it was green flag coming around. But we are flying around the track right now. And the, a few cars got a huge jump. They might be able to pull away from the pack behind them. Yeah, four or five cars here. Ford, Buchanan, Street, Steel, and Kreuzer. They got their own little pack going. So let's see if the pack behind them can catch back up or if they're going to pull away. So we're going three wide once again. Three wide early on after a caution or at the beginning of the race is a no-no. At the number three, the 41, and the 28 of George Buck here. At three wide isn't isn't the way to go early on. I believe it's in the rule book, guys. Got to read that rule book. I know it's uh, long tedious sometimes. Read that many pages, but... 
Yeah, we got a we got a little pack here. Ford began to steal Croiser streets. Now we got a pack back here. We got Buck Miller, Easel, Smith. It's just gonna be a uh, try and hold on to the next stage. And not sure why we got a yellow there. Couple cars. Hmm. Oh, uh, David Guimon here. See what happened. Oh yeah, there's wreck there. He is facing the wrong way. Ooh, some traffic coming by him there. Emon popping out of yellow. We have Ford trying to catch up to the pace car. And right now. Daytona going about as smooth as we expect. But our drivers that are winning and losing so far this race, uh, Max Ford's up one position. Corey Buchanan is up eight from where he started. He's in second right now. Zachary Steele, he is up two spots from where he qualified. Uh, but the biggest winners of the race so far, Richard Corey is up nine spots from 13th. He is up to fourth. George Buck is up to seventh from 18th. So he's up 11 spots. And Joshua Smith... He is up 11 spots as well. So Joshua Smith here doing a good job to keep clean. And he is going to stay out along with George Buck, Richard Kreuzer, Zachary Steele. Buchanan's going to be out, Steele's going to be out, Croiser's out, Buck's out, and Smith is out. So they must all be on the same strategy here, whereas everybody else is uh, on a different one. And around comes... It must be Aldrich or Rogers. Just like that is Rogers getting the lucky dog wave around. Aldrich is not on the track right now. Not showing him. Not sure where he went. He qualified third, I believe. So Michael Aldrich having a bad day. He's down 16 spots. Uh, Joshua O'Brien down 14 spots. And Jason Heaney down 14 spots. So not doing, uh, not doing the greatest here for a few of these new drivers out on tracks. Heaney, uh, Bins... Gimon, he's down a little bit, but he's in the pit lane getting some repairs. O'Brien, he's been in the pit since that last big wreck. We'll see. We'll see how things turn out for all these drivers here. Losing more and more as we go. We're about 45 minutes into the race, though. We'll take a look in on Joe Barry here. He is near the back of the pack right now, but he was up in second for the race start. Just a few laps ago, he pit and dropped down a few positions. He is still in the position he started in 14th. Take a look at his car. Why not? The Canada car there. We saw him fall back a little bit off the start.
but the name of the game right now is get to the end then you can make your push for a win um you want to be able to you know make that push and you want to be able to you know keep your car clean so then you're not being dragged down by any extra damage you want to keep um it to where you can make your way to the front of the pack if need be hardest part is staying clean Yep, exactly. Make it to the end. Got to, you know, really test that patience. You want to fly up behind some people. You want to really push, but, you know, just staying in line to the end, you know, doing some fuel conserving, it really does pay off. Uh, and we've seen that in the past for uh, some of our, our previous race winners that we've had. Let's get a win, Kreuzer. Kreuzer's sitting in third right now. He's doing really well in that number 90 machine. That Sopas Painting Co. Big S on there that you see on the hood. One of the last year's sponsors for the season. And here's somebody coming out of the pits. I believe that might be Gimon. Or O'Brien or Rogers or Aldrich, one of them, but somebody coming out of the pits, it sounded Green like. And Buchanan is on the gas. Gets a good jump here. Kreuzer right there with them. Teammates, these two, so they're going to want to work together to try and get away from this pack. As we see Buchanan getting pushed by Kreuzer, and we have Zachary Steele coming up behind as well. George Buck on the outside with Joshua Smith coming close in the 99 machine down on the inside. See him fly by here. Love that sound. This car sound amazing going around this track. Yeah, good little good little hold up front. These top three drivers really holding their own. Ford on the outside in the number 11. Ooh, we're four wide. Yep, that's what happens when we go four wide. We go four wide and we have issues like that. Anybody listening that's in the race, please throw a reminder out to the drivers. Three wide and four wide is not advisable or legal according to the Octane Outlaw rules uh, immediately. So take a look. Oh, geez. Who was that that came flying up from behind? Quite sure what happened there. He, maybe he didn't know? Well, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt right now, but I don't even know what number that was that came flying up behind him. We have Gimon here. And that's 32, maybe. At 32 of Curtis Rogers, and. Curtis, I'm sure he didn't mean to, to do that. Let's see from his point of view. Especially if there's a yellow out that he's not expecting. Oh, you see he's, he's on his brakes trying to downshift a little bit. Oh yeah, and Gimon does come down from up high quite aggressively. That's unfortunate to have a little bit of, you know, stuff like that going on.
Let's see if we can't find what happened here. Might have to go a little farther back. This is the back stretch. Yeah, just some craziness going on here. Croizer out front, though. Zachary Steele in second. Corey Buchanan in third. Bunch of people down in the pits. Heaney in the pits. Gimon in the pits. Buck in the pits. Max Ford. Smith. O'Brien. Got about 12 people left in the race that are out on track. Sure, Rogers will get back out there. Smith. Rogers is still out there. Smith is out there. Ford getting repairs. Buck getting repairs. Gimon, Heaney. All of them, uh, all of them trying to get themselves going again. Richard Kreuzer doing a fantastic job just keeping himself up front, which is, uh, the way to keep out of most wrecks. The only way that you're going, uh, to get wrecked is if you actually get bumped uh, by the car behind you staying out front is really nice to keep yourself clean so you either want to stay far enough back to be able to avoid a wreck or all the way up front so then you can just avoid anything going on behind you all the, all the incidents are happening behind so far Kreuzer looking good And Zachary Seal looking good. Buchanan looking good as well. Roberg, number 41. He's a new name. He's doing a fantastic job here. Doug Easel doing a good job. Noah Miller, our highest finishing uh, driver from last season. He is, uh, he is back in sixth. Yeah, it's a shame that we're missing uh, Alex Coffey. We're missing Blaine Wilson. They were fun to watch, um, especially in these these uh, restrictor plate races. Getting ready to go green, though, this time around. Richard Kreuzer out front. He's going to give us the green flag once we get around this back stretch here. And our lovely pace car driver. Holding his line fairly well. Might have to get him out there. I know AI racing has a bad rap. It really does. Always has had a bad rap because, well, it's AI. It's not a person. You know, you join iRacing to race people. But AI isn't too bad to race against green, sometimes. Green, green. And we are green. Croys are going green right away. Right in the beginning of that start zone. Backed a couple people up, it looked like. But Croyzer gets a good jump. And Buchanan right behind Croys are going to give him his teammate a good push. Going to try and keep, like I said, just keep ahead of the competition so then any wrecks that go on are able to be, uh, you know, able to be avoided. 50 laps remaining here in the race. We are on lap 30 right now. A 
swap to our tower here lap 32 mind you Ooh, one car down and it looks like yep we're gonna have another caution here yellow 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 another car getting getting caught up behind let's see what what we had going on here cars coming across the line here and yeah just steel gets the back of the 41 ever so slightly let's see that again I swear this is like Zachary Steele's signature move is to just tap the bottom left he like gets out of line taps the bottom left of the the car in front of him and they just go flying off track he did that earlier in the race and I know he's done it he did it last Daytona 500 too because I asked myself that same one there's two cars stopped on the track what happened there who was just stopped was that puff looks like it see what happens to puff here Get that bump. And Steel gets bumped by Miller. And then, ooh, just a bump. Slows down, slows down. Trying to avoid, trying to avoid. Ooh, it's the brakes. Yep. <laughs> just trying to avoid the number 15 of Garrett Streets. And he just bumps him. Might have stalled it out. Trying to figure out who's going, who's doing what. Yeah, that's scary at high speed to try and avoid all that. Here's from Chris Puff's point of view. Oh, you see a car go down, you let off. Oh no, uh, hit the brakes. Hopefully you don't get smacked from behind. Oh, and just try, oh, hit the brakes and that brake, that braking pulls you down low. Oh, he's bottomed out. Streets, I believe, is bottomed. He was stuck on the on the track. Oh no. That is unbelievable. Oh no, he got going again. Yeah, he just blinked for a second, but. Or is he still out front? Buchanan second, Easel third, Thompson fourth, Barry fifth, Bins in sixth, Yimont in seventh, Buck in eighth, Miller in ninth, and Heaney in tenth right now. Remember though, no three wides early on. No three wides early on because that's how we end up getting uh, how we end up getting these issues where we can't even get going past past a single lap. Going three wide, yeah, you're gonna have the speed. You're gonna think you're faster, but it's all because of the draft. You just file in line, wait until you get to the end to make that three wide move work, or later on in the race. Want to keep to that high or that low? Especially, like I said, I believe it is in the rules. Let me let me pop up the rule book here for us, and uh, we'll take a look. We'll see. Ba -ba 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 rules. Let's see. In the rules. Gonna search.
three wide rule no person shall on any super speedway pass three wide on starts and restarts for three laps unless five or less laps left in the race or a green white checkered is in effect causing a wreck by going three wide will result in an automatic end of line for next race so setting yourself up for failure if you're trying to do that three wide early on everybody next race being sonoma i believe uh, every position is going to matter on that road course. You're really going to want to uh, keep yourself clean. So, no three wide for three laps. The 3-3 three, three rule. No three wide for three laps on super speedways. End of story. We got it. Let's make it happen here, Richard. Let's get a good start. Let's keep it from going three wide. Lap 35 right now. Lap 45 will be our second stage. Now we have a 35 lap sprint to the end. Right now, 35 laps has taken us an hour. So once we get another 10 laps in, we'll have another hour worth of racing. My estimate is a two and a half hour broadcast, everybody. So strap in. We got a little ways to go unless we get going green and staying green here uh, with a good start from Richard and Corey. You would think that either Richard's going to try and jump up high or Corey's going to try and drop down low uh, so then they can be drafting buddies. Green fly, green fly. And Richard gets a good jump. Corey does not seem to get a better jump than Doug Easel down on the inside. So Corey's going to stick to the outside line there. And yes, it is a good rule there. Tries to keep us at least getting going green. You know, after three laps, he can start, you know, making some moves. Great run here, Doug Easel. Pushing Richard Kreuzer and Thompson right there, too. Thompson up six positions from where he started in ninth. Yeah, you just want to you want to get close enough to push and get that bubble, but you don't want to get too close to where that draft is throwing you off and the sorry where the draft is throwing you off and you, you, know, you can't hold yourself steady. You want to hold yourself steady while getting pushed. You're very aware of the three wide. We have some cars kind of bumping and jumping around here. Zachary Steele. Looks like he was in a little bit of trouble there. Going down off track. He's going to get pushed by Max Ford. Max Ford trying to get himself back up to the front. Max Ford starting in... Let me see in a second. I'm liking this green flag action we got going on here. <laughs> Admin say it will be a big discussion later. Yeah, that's that's for sure. I mean, three wide before three is uh, is a huge thing. It, as we see, it causes a lot of wrecks, um, and it is a good rule to have, especially for leagues. I mean, nobody here is a professional racer. You don't have that lead, or you don't have that rule in uh, in NASCAR or anything. But you know, nobody here is a professional. You're trying to hold your line. Uh, not everybody has the same hardware. Some people are going to have Logitech. Some people are going to have you know some higher end uh, you know sim racing gear that makes it easier to hold that line you know perfectly. And sometimes it's down to the driver skill too. Like some drivers might be new to the sim, and some drivers might be a little bit more seasoned. But you know, we, it just helps everybody keep themselves alive for a few laps. But we're doing a great job here, coming. Ooh, Doug Easel gets a little squirrely. Tommy Thompson, ooh, into the wall, and there we go. We're gonna have ourselves another caution. 
That was just a little bit of Tommy Thompson, I think, having a little too much speed. And just touching the back of Doug Easel. Let's see here. Let's see here. We have... Let's go on right up front. And then, yeah, just Tommy. Tommy gets the back of Doug Easel just a tiny bit and then comes up into Martin Roberg. Ooh, wow. And Roberg gets destroyed. Not sure who that was that hit him, but wow. His car is completely toast. I think maybe that was... No, George Buck is up front. Max Ford back joshua smith is running up front is that curtis rogers coming across here no it wasn't rogers o'brien uh it's uh morrow jeremy morrow let's see so we'll go back morrow in the back Coming around, you know, sticking in the in the draft of some of these cars here. But then, oh yeah, just cars sliding down. Not really able to see them. Let's see what we get here. Go back to Moro. Go to his cockpit. There we go, Moro coming around. As you can see, it's hard to see. You know, you got cars going around. Oh, he's looking down on the inside, seeing what's happening down there. And then, oh, he, yeah, he just... He was probably looking at the crash on the inside, hoping that nothing was going to happen to... to send those drivers back up on track and just wasn't paying attention to the high side. And yeah, his car is destroyed. Watch Tommy Thompson's angle here. He just hits Roberg and then, yeah, just boom into Eni. A few other people trying to avoid. Big hit there from Moro. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's a rough go there. Here's Zachary Steele coming through the mess. Ooh, keeps it into the apron, just kind of splits the uprights. Pace car coming out right there for him. Couple cars staying uh, ahead of ahead of the problems that are going on on track. So Patrick, one of our admins, <clears throat> says it's not a discussion. No three, no three wide first three laps after caution. Anyone that does it and gets protested will get points, which has repercussions. And that is very true. The uh, the new format for for penalties and point assignment is uh, make sure that you put in a protest. Um, there is a protest form in the Discord. So anybody watching this back. Um, which a lot of people that are in the race will watch it back just to see, you know, what went on during this crash or that crash. Um, definitely save your replays. Go back, watch, and say, hey, you know, on lap 27, this guy got into me. On lap 40, uh, we had the big wreck, and, uh, you know, it was because this guy went three wide or, you know, he just got into the back of me. And it was an avoidable thing. So if it's something that's avoidable, definitely, definitely throw a protest in um it's just a racing incident some hard racing you know banging doors and a little little spin out happens you know those kind of things happen but uh patrick also says send a protest form and the required uh stuff for it and i will look at it
Yep. That's that's I mean a, a good good league always has a way to uh you know keep drivers from being too aggressive, keep drivers, you know, kind of in line uh with the the rules that are set in place. And it will be uh you know, it'll be a fun time for the admin to go back and take a look at the protests that come in, determine who's going to be getting points uh, for protests and who will be getting uh, end of lines and stuff like that. Coming to the green here. Let's jump on board with Richard Kreuzer as he goes green. green, fly, green and fly. there he goes. See those RPMs revving up? In second gear. Ooh, a little late on that shift. You might have Corey Buchanan. No. Does not have Corey Buchanan coming up behind him too quickly. It looks like the outer line had a bad jump again. Was that Joe Barry? No, that is the number 84. Chris Puff had a bad jump off the line. And it looks like we have one single line going down the backstretch here. Now we're starting to spread out a little bit, trying to go in back into two lines, and there we go, Keeney going up into the second line there. And there we go, Heaney trying to push on that outside line, has a good chunk of speed, 192 on the speed, over 191 from Kreuzer, so that 192 will be pushing right up behind. Ooh, and wow, Corey Buchanan gets into Richard Kreuzer, and that is going to be a big Don't incident here for the race leader. Doug Easel does get in front, but wow, that was a big incident there. Eni is in the pits. Let's see uh, what transpired a little bit more closely. Kreuzer kind of gets into no man's land there. Ooh, and then touches Buchanan. Sends him up in the Heaney. And yeah, that's... Uh, oh, and then the rest of the field is coming up behind, trying to avoid the cars that have wrecked. See it again. Doug Easel somehow made it through that. Ooh, he's almost got tagged by Kreuzer. What happened to Kreuzer to where he just kind of got eaten up? I don't know why my graphic just stuck to the screen there. He just kind of gets himself into the middle and getting himself into the middle. He just starts losing a little bit of ground. That air is just turbulent left and right, right, left and right, left and right. So he's just trying to uh, get himself back into, you know, into one of the lines or back into, you know, maybe trying to keep up with the leaders. And he just gets tagged by Corey or he tags Corey. Here is Corey trying to get by, and yeah, he just gets tagged there. Just a little bump. Here we go. We are live once again. Max Ford out front finds himself out there again. But discussion going on about race reviews. The system has changed, so anybody watching back, system has changed quite a bit. Um, reviews are 
it's not an automatic full race watch review because some of these races do get lengthy and discussing incidents does get quite lengthy as well that can take you know four or five admin up to two three four hours discussing incidents and that is not a feasible way to do things so now there is a new protest form uh you know once again it's in discord you can find it there in the driver forums um i believe it's in there it might be in a different tab but anyway there is a driver protest form you fill out uh, you send in what happened you send a short video of the incident describing what happened um and then yeah you the admins will review it um, if it is not sent in it will not be looked at so if you know one of these incidents where a car you know just takes you out completely if the admins don't know about it the admins can't look at it and they're not going to look at the entire race because that is a huge time time consumption huge restraint on their abilities and it will put more stress on them to try and make the league better instead of watching replays for two three hours they could be you know recruiting drivers they can be making graphics they can be uh you know organizing the system you know so we can get the teams um you know organized a little bit better so then when i pop up nice little uh graphics for you guys it actually shows it like we'll give you a uh, a nice little example here you see this right here qualifying this was qualifying results you can see and all these teams are not up to date because the admin are watching videos of you guys and that's what they had to do last season so it's something that we're we're trying to work with the admins on we're trying to get everything organized a little bit better make these graphics better make these videos better make everything run a lot smoother so when it comes to watching videos for a few hours between four or five people a big waste of time um that can be solved by just submitting a small video yourself so we're putting more power in the driver's hands as patrick would say but we're gonna have max ford going green the 11 farmers got some great clips on the back there too i will say i do need a haircut and a a beard trim it is getting out of hand so max ford that that uh, advertising working for you there probably gonna have to make my stop by a great clips sometime soon Pace car in number 11. Max Ford is in the start zone, and there he goes. He is green. Doug Easel's been doing a great job pushing whoever is in front of him, so he's going to uh, try and keep in that draft of Max Ford. Lap 48 here. Both stages are done and, and dusted here at Daytona, so now we race to the end. We can keep green to the end. That would be amazing. Or at least keep green for a while. That's the number 41. Can't seem to, to decide where he wants to go. If he wants to go up high or go down low. Number 15 machine, Garrett Streets, is going to get pushed by Zachary Steele. Zachary Steele right there to give him a little shove. Some encouragement on the outside to try and catch up to the to the 41. Looks like that might be Buchanan in the back coming up. Yeah, he's going to have a hard time catching up without being in the draft. Buchanan having a little hard time getting that damage fixed. Great line of drivers here. Easel really sliding back and forth on that number 11. You don't want to be sliding back and forth if you end up making contact because that's where things kind of go a little, uh, a little haywire and you have a... You know, the back end of that, that front car kicks out just a tiny bit, can cause all sorts of issues. And that's what you want to avoid right now is a wreck up in the front of the field. Because then you have the big one, and that's uh, that's 
not fun for anybody. Trying to get that car back and going again. Once again, we have Corey Buchanan coming down in the pit lane. Less cars on track than when we started, for sure. We got 13, uh, 14 with George Buck, 15 with Noah Miller. Joshua Smith, yeah, this little group of cars here. There, there's 16 cars. Eni out. Rogers is on track, trying to get himself unlapped. It's not showing laps down. It's showing a. Uh... Yeah, it's not showing laps down. It's showing uh, how far back he is time-wise. But Rogers only has completed. 43 laps whereas max ford has completed 50 so he's about seven laps behind just trying to keep his position for some points tonight and we're starting to see two little groups form here number 11 uh, Max Ford is getting pushed by this group of four drivers, but number 41 Martin Roberg leading the charge of that That bigger group of drivers back behind consisting of streets Barry uh, Morrow bins and Thompson And it looks like Gimon's on the back end of that too. Gimon was a lap down at one point He is hanging in there though keeping in that draft You see the the I don't want to say the more experienced drivers, but probably the more uh, super weight, super speedway experienced drivers. Um, you know, they're bunched up a little more than the guys that were in the back. And there might have just been a little bit of, you know, trouble along the way. But right now we're uh, going back to two wide. Doug Easel still pushing Max Ford on that low line. If drivers want justice drivers always want justice. It's just whether or not they're uh, they're willing to go through the process of submitting a protest form is the incident that bad to where you need to submit that protest form or Was it just a little racing incident? Yep, that group's starting to pull away again now that number 41 of Roberg included now uh, Steele on the outside leading Max Ford on the inside leading and Roberg giving a good push to Mac or to uh, Zachary Steele Ooh, here we go. Here we go. Zachary Steele again getting a little bit a Little bit uh, wobbly when he has a car in front of him and he's got that little extra speed. He's got to let off that gas a little bit. I know it seems counterproductive. You just want to have that foot down, but you just got to let off the gas a tiny bit. Let your car, uh, you know, settle in. And then you'll be uh, all set for later on in the race when you have to use that speed to push. You don't want that damage. You don't want... Oh, there we go. Little bump. Wow, they stayed out of each other. A little bump there for Zachary Steele and Roberg. A couple cars coming up behind now. They're, you know, working together. We got three by two by two. And we got another two. Then we got another three. Another two, another three. We're all spread out throughout the track right now. Leaders doing a good job to stay in their, their tight little pack here. Ford, Easel, and Kreuzer. Yeah, Kreuzer, yeah, I mean, he's... The one thing Kreuzer's doing that's really good is if he does get a little too much speed and he lets off and he's still got too much speed, he kind of checks up a tiny bit and goes up the track the slightest bit to try and keep out of the back of Doug Easel and keep this train going. But now they have uh, more... more riders aboard this train. Zachary Steele... Kind of making it three wide. They're getting down on the inside of the 41 of Roberg. And when that pack catches up with that big of a speed difference, we'll, we'll jump on board and see our speed. 191 from Ford. Some of these drivers, I mean, like Steel, 195, 196. 
and Ford is up there at 196, just got there. So a little bit of speed difference when you're, you know, farther back in that draft as opposed to when you're up in the front of the draft. So the speed difference, that's what's causing all these cautions. But we're we're looking good right now. We're, we're holding steady. Green, we're spread out a little bit. This front pack doing a great job keeping things going. Jeremy Morrow right in the mix. Uh, ones that are off of the pack, Joe Barry. He's working with the number five machine. Or he is the number five machine. He's working with the number 28 machine. That is George Buck, uh, who is... He's not a lap... Oh, he is a lap down. George Buck is a lap down. He's our lucky dog right now. Trevor Bins, Gimon, and Thompson in a three-man three, three man pack working. And then we have Puff along with, looks like, Miller and Smith all working together, trying to get themselves unlapped. So it's... Everybody's kind of working together. Yeah, we're going to see how things happen if we have another caution that pulls drivers back together. This front pack doing a great job, though. We have, we've had a couple little moments, but... Keeping it together. At least to the end. You see how, how Kreuzer drops back like that? So, that that air that's being disturbed from the draft is much more powerful. So you see Kreuzer is going to have a lot more speed coming into this corner than the other two cars up front. So this will play into effect later in the race when you'll see a car back off and then that draft is so much more powerful. It's, it's almost... Once you get too far away, you lose the draft, but all the way up until you're too far out of the draft, the farther away you get, the po more powerful that draft is. So it allows you to catch back up to that car in front of you. And Kreuzer right now is uh, he's probably doing a little bit of fuel saving trying to get to the end. Excuse me, sorry. I had a little bit of a dry spot in the throat. So, had to take a little sip of water uh, while coughing my, my lungs out. But we have seen it in the past where drivers that are out front uh, actually run out of fuel because you're using so much more fuel out front than you are when you're trailing a car um, just because of that draft. That draft allows you to A, let off the throttle and still keep up with the cars. And then B... Uh, it allows you to uh, just cut through the wind uh, and the air so much easier. And wow, what a block there from Zachary Seal. I mean, you still got 21 laps to go, Zachary. <laughs> you don't want to be blocking like that. Wow. Stay out in front. Keep yourself alive, though. You don't want to be caught up in a wreck like that. <clears throat> All you want to do, like, if you're, if you're in this top seven drivers right now, if you're in the top seven, all you want to do is keep yourself alive. Keep yourself alive. And, you know, at the end, any one of these seven drivers can make a huge push. And it looks like they're coming up on the back of... Yeah, it looks like Curtis Rogers, number 32, getting out of the way. Letting the pack by. He's probably going to grab the... Oh, no. He, he let off quite a bit. Just getting way out of the way. Just running his race. But some some of the lap drivers might grab onto the uh, the pack and try and hold with them. You can see a little wiggling back and forth there. Ooh. There we go. There it is. And you do not want that to be happening. Yellow flag from that. Wow. Yeah, you don't want that to be happening while you're uh, up in the top couple of cars there. Zachary Steele's car is not looking great. You can see the 74 just gets tapped by Steele. 74 just he has nowhere to go. He's down on the apron. Steel gets uh, pushed up into Roberg. Roberg, I'm not sure how many more 
Not sure how many. If I could talk, how many more fast repairs he's gonna have? I've seen him a couple times now, uh, in some some damage causing wrecks. Let's take a look. We're going to go a few seconds before the wreck. Jump on board. The 74 really just getting a little bit of a little bit of a tap there from steel. He goes down low, just tries to keep himself on track and comes back up. See it from Oro's point of view. It's getting tapped a little bit. You see Moro right there behind the number fifteen of streets. He just he gets into that spot, but then oh yeah, seal. It just the spot closes really quickly because you get yourself out of the draft. Oh yeah, and then he just catches the wall. You get yourself out of the draft, so you got all that speed coming up behind that car on the outside. Let's take a look at it again here. Where are we? Where are we? Moro, we're gonna go in slow motion here. You can see he has this this speed and he's going to jump to the inside He's trying to do it nice and easy, but he kind of overcorrects back to the right Trying to jump to the inside so then he can take that inside line and hopefully get pushed by steel behind but steel behind has a is a little closer than expected and the number 74 gets uh, a little caught out. He gets out of that draft so when the number 74 comes down, he gets out of the draft of the number 15. And it causes him to slow down ever so slightly, which closes that gap between him and Steel. So it is a very fine, very fine point to try and make something like that happen. You really have to be certain with where you're at and the car behind you is at. You almost want a little bit of a buffer. Um, and worst case, you just let off the gas and stick behind the 15, uh, staying up on that higher line. But we have two cars that are going to get to wave around. We have Buchanan and we have, um, looks like number nine of Henny. Or Heaney. I'm going to have to, I have to ask you after in Discord, is it Henny or is it Heaney? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, all 14 of you out there watching, um, definitely, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the uh, share, share it with your friends. Um, it's always a fun time seeing family and friends uh, coming on out and watching these races. We always had uh, Alex Coffey's mom watching. We had uh, some of the Noah Miller fan group out there watching uh, him watch it, or him win a couple races last season. Um, and it was always fun to interact with family and friends. So if you're out there, A, hit the subscribe. B, share the video with whoever you know is out there that you want to see the video. Share it with the friends, with the family. And then last but not least, go ahead and show who you uh, are rooting for. Throw it in the chat. Say, uh, you know, we've had a couple people rooting for Richard Kreuzer, a couple rooting for um, Noah Miller. We've had a couple rooting for... Um, uh, who was it? For Roberg, we've had a couple of Roberg fans out there, so we like hearing when you guys uh, are, you know, have a big, a big fan base. Uh, it's always fun interacting. So if you have somebody that you're rooting for, throw it in the chat. Um, Bobby, I wish I made it tonight, but another league ran too late. Rooting for Martin Roberg. Um, if it is Bobby Blowers from last season. We missed you. If it is Bobby from a 
different season, different Bobby altogether that we have yet to cover. We will see you next week, I'm sure, at Sonoma. And I'm not even sure if it is pronounced that way, but we're going to keep going with it. In the start zone, and number 11 is off. He gets a good jump. Maybe he's trying to get that, packs, uh, that pack established again up front. Uh, 11, 67, 15, 90, and the 7 machine <clears throat> all uh, getting a good jump. Well, the 7 machine a little behind with Tommy Thompson, but that draft will start kicking in. Easel getting up on that high line. Will Kreuzer stay low or go high? Looks like he is going to stay low with Ford, and the number 15 of Streets will go high. And that pack is catching up. Number three in the mix, Trevor Bins, new driver to the league. We've got a, quite a few new drivers up front here. Noah Miller, one of our old hats, back there in sixth right now. Or actually, no, no Miller is down a lap, so he is in 11th. Let's go number eight. Yep, number eight, Noah Miller. We are on him right now. He is on that outside line. Noah, one of our, our better drivers last season, consistently putting down good laps and consistently in good finishing positions. As the drivers go on by... Number 67, looking to get pushed. And all Noah can really hope for is that there is another yellow somewhere. That is his biggest hope and prayer right now, because Noah is dangerous once he gets back on that lead lap. He can make a lot happen. But Noah, Miller a lap down, Smith a lap down, Steele, Roberg, Amoro all in the pits. You see the 15, the back end of that 15 just getting pushed real hard by uh, the number 84 of Puff. Chris Puff in fifth, another new driver. New drivers all throughout the top. Easily raced a couple races last season, number 67. Bins, Easel, Ford, Kreuzer, Streets, and Puff all in the top. Ooh, and Kreuzer banging doors with, uh, looks like, Number 15 of streets, and yeah, he he really was uh, getting a little, I don't want to say getting aggressive, but just maybe a little squirrely. These cars are starting to settle in more and more. These drivers getting more and more familiar with each other and what they can get away with and what they can do. Number 11 gets himself down into position, and we are starting to get into that, that hour of the race where... You know, where anything can happen. Anyone can come across the finish line as a winner. And, ooh, Easel goes into the wall. That surely is going to pop a yellow. It looks like, yep, there we go, a yellow. Easel now into the pits. That might be his race done and dusted. But we have Bins, we have Ford, we have Puff, Streets, Thompson, Kreuzer, Barry, Guimon, Buck, and Miller. All coming to the line right now, and Miller should get that lucky dog wave around. We'll see if anybody has to come to the pits to top off on fuel, but we are 11 laps to go. By the time we get done with... Yeah, by the time we get done with this... Ooh, there's a there's a pace car time to check up by the time we get done with this caution we're probably gonna have about uh eight to nine laps left to go we're gonna have a short little little sprint to the end um but once again three wide rule still in effect up until five laps to go so it's gonna be a fun one bins ford puff streets kreuzer top five Croys are doing a fantastic job, up eight spots. Chris Puff is up 16 spots from where he started. 
You know, he started in 19th and he is holding his own up there in the front. Let's take a look back at this wreck here. Weasel going off track there. Let's try and catch this out here. You see 90. Ooh, we just. And he gets into him a tiny bit there. And you can see. Just, yeah, that little tap. Yeah, just. Just a little bit on the bumper. Kreuzer's been, you know, a little weebly wobbly. Just the tiniest bit when he gets into that draft. I mean, it's thrown a lot of water, a lot of water. It's thrown a lot of, of turbulence off of those cars. So you get a little bit of like, you, you know, when you drive next to a semi, uh, you know, multiply that by about five times that amount. And you're getting that much wind off of the car in front of you. Just smacking the car. You're, you're trying to just keep it steady, but it's weeble wobbles back and forth. Kreuzer's still holding his own uh, all right right now, and he is in 10th. Miller up in the 9th. He gets his lucky dog. He's going to be coming to the back of the pack here any moment. We'll see him in the background. As there he comes. Hopefully he sees the back of the pack. We've had it before where drivers are uh, trying to catch up to the field and just... Either don't have their relative on or are just uh, not not aware that the pack is coming up really quickly. But let's take a look at the front of of the, uh, the driver's pack here. I don't think anybody's going to... <laughs> yeah, go Trevor. Uh, I don't think anybody is going to pit right now. I mean, unless you really have to for fuel, but I think we are going to just, everybody's going to stay out. No need to take tires. Tires are, you know, kind of irrelevant here at Daytona. As long as they're not, you know, don't have a puncture or, or hanging off the rim, then you're all right. It's like Roberg will be coming into the pits after uh, some damage. Roberg hanging in in 14th, just trying to get, you know, get his well-deserved points. Steel still in the pits. From his incidents, Buchanan, a few laps down, Rogers, a few laps down. Rogers has actually gone up a few places from the beginning. Like Roberg is out, and he must be out of fast repairs because he is, um, you know, still doesn't have front end there. Gordon's quick, 11 going to get the win. Trevor is better. Oh, let's see. I mean, we, we got nine laps here to figure it out. And when we come to the line, we're going to have eight laps to go. So. <laughs> from the chat, Daddy Trev. Go get the win. <laughs> from Big Country. Well, we have some uh, some back and forth in the chat. We love to see it. Trevor. Bins, Max, Ford going at it up in front. If I had to say, my, my bet is going to be on somebody just com completely random. Um, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Tommy Thompson, that number seven car. Number seven car, down on the inside. Let's, let's jump on him. I'm going to go with him. Everybody's picking their favorites to, to make it. I think... With all the fighting that's going to be going on in the last few, the number seven is going to come out on top. The five is just hanging out. Joe Barry, yeah, he's, he's just hanging there. He's creeping. Hanging in there, ready to strike. Anybody can make this happen here at the end, and we're going to go green. green fly, and there green we go. Fly. Trevor Bins has the start, gets a good jump, and we have Max Ford jumping right down in there. It's going to be Ford pushing Bins to the end here, hopefully. There's somebody going way down. Oh, that is uh, Roberg with no front end as the pack is staying fairly close. Bins 
right behind Max Ford. And we are, uh, we are underway with our last little stint here of the race. And who's going to try and, uh, who's going to try and make a move right now? Who's going to try and just, you know, wait it out. These drivers are being fairly aggressive for being aggressive with bins. You know, he's just trying to stay in front of them. And he gives them a little bit of a. I don't want to say a shove, but Ben says nobody out there to help him. Uh, he is getting somebody popped out right there. Looks like that is the number seven of Tommy Thompson coming out to help Ben's. Ben's is struggling on the outside. He has no drafting partner, and there they go. They're starting to draft number seven, Tommy Thompson, getting the push on Ben's. Drivers all over the 3M machine of George Buck as well, getting his nose in there. He tries his best to race clean. Hey, Richard Kreuzer in there too. He's back out on track. He's on the main lap. He's just a little ways behind. So if something happens here, he'll be able to catch up and get a good push in a nice little sprint here. But Max Ford still holding Garrett Streets right behind him. Number 15 snuck his way in there. And where did Bins go? Bins is back in sixth. Bins is now a little ways back. He might be just, you know, might be lurking. We'll, we'll call it lurking because we all know how Daytona happens. It gets crazy. People start trying to make moves. Number 15 making his move up high right now. Six laps to go. Going to be coming to five laps to go at the line. So now, if we do go green again, that three-wide rule is not going to be in effect. That three-wide rule will uh, be thrown right out the window. And, ooh, we have a little bump there. Gimon up top. And, ooh, yeah, Noah Miller getting in with Gimon. Yellow flag, is out. Yellow flag out. We are going to have one more go at this. And this should... And that was Bins, it looked like, getting into him. Yeah, Bins trying to just get by Miller. Getting held up, Bins there. And then number nine of that Heaney. Nine of Heaney. Just kind of got stuck behind the whole thing. And right now... Unlikely leader, uh, Chris Puff, 18 positions up from where he started. Max Ford still uh, still up front. He's in the position he started in second. Garrett Street's in number 15. He's in third, up nine positions from where he started. George Buck up 14 positions where he started. And David Guimont up 11 positions from where he started. So it's proving that you know you don't have to be the fastest at these super speedways obviously the the draft really helps but on top of that i'm um, just staying clean these drivers have been uh been the cleanest of the pack so far max ford staying out of a lot of trouble um chris puff staying out of quite a bit of trouble Ooh, george buck <laughs> gimon almost got into george buck gimon was just checking up uh george buck was right there Slow on track, checked up himself. So that just threw uh, threw Gimon out out of his comfort zone there. But yeah, we have Puff. You know, new driver to the uh, to the Octane Outlaws scene. Couple drivers coming in that had damage: Heaney, uh, Roberg, and Miller. Miller hopefully just gets a quick fast repair gets back out there and has a chance i would be not be surprised if noah ended up finding his way somehow you know getting him his uh, yep there's his fast repair right back out there doesn't need fuel doesn't need tires just needs to get out there and get running but yeah i wouldn't be surprised if noah finds himself somewhere up front i mean he's in ninth right now i'm sure we're gonna see a big one as we come across the line um 
A green white checkered will be you know it's probably going to be in our future and i believe we have two green white checkers but this is going to be uh interesting Anything can happen. We're at that point. We're at the end. Going to have two laps to go when we come across the line one more time. And then Chris Puff is going to have uh, two laps, or three, or one lap, really. He's going to have one lap to uh, try and get us to the end. And what he is hoping is that this green white checkered that we're about to have is going to play into his his hands and he's going to be able to you know get a win in his first ever octane outlaws race and i asked him before the race i know i said this earlier but for anybody that missed it i asked him before the race if he was related to um the much beloved mrs puff from spongebob and somebody in the chat said yes so mrs puff would be so proud of you right now three to go still three to go that didn't tick down huh well anyway three to go mr mr puff on the uh front row there on the inside Got Max Ford, who has been strong all day. Strong qualifying lap, strong, uh, strong hold of that top pack. Uh, his strategy's been on point to keep him up there. But yeah, a lot of new names. Puff up front. Streets, Garrett Streets up front here. Looking like he will be in third to start. He's right on the bumper of Puff right now. George Buck, one of our old hats here at Octane Outlaws, along with Thompson and Gimon, this little pack. Kreuzer, and then behind them, Joe Barry in the five. Noah Miller in the eight. Trevor Bins in the number three, in the a little bit farther back. And then... Looks like we do have Zachary Steele on track. We'll see him fighting for position against uh, Corey Buchanan right now, who's also on track, a few cars behind. <laughs> Wonder if anybody will block the last run for the win. It could happen. I believe we are still accepting drivers for the truck series, but we are green, green, green puff fly. is he is away, but Ford yellow, yellow, has yellow. Why are we yellow again? Whoa, 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 what is going on here? We had a yellow thrown right away, and I am not sure why that is. Not quite sure what happened there. We had green and then we had a yellow right away. Not sure what happened to, that a yellow was thrown, George Buck was thrown from where he was. We'll see. I don't know if they were getting into each other behind. And it looks like it, it was Ford, Thompson, Buck, Rogers, and Kreuzer all getting 4X right there. So there was a lot of banging the doors, I guess.
We have some cars stopped on track? Are they are they really stopped on track? There's Puff, Streets, Ford. Are we waiting? What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for the pace car to come around? I think you have to go catch the pace car. Okay, there's the <laughs> there's the pace car. Okay, and we're gonna have some oh some cars that are just stopped on track. I'm not. Oh, there goes Heaney. I'm not sure what's going on. This is this is chaos. This is bad. Okay, things are starting to level back out. Things are leveling back out. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it looks like just a lot of uh, a lot of incidents popping right on that that start that really just caused our uh, our software to throw a caution. Cars getting around on each other, some some bumping, some cars having a rough time. So three laps to go. Sticking on that for a green white checker. Anybody out there? That is watching. Who do you want to win today? Uh, Max Ford is leading us. Chris Puff in second. Um, Max Ford got his, his himself up there before the caution popped out. Garrett Streets in third. Gimon in fourth. Barry Miller, Vins Buck Miller. Like I said, I told you Miller was going to find his way up there. He's going to be in third row, and that is well within striking distance for a driver like Miller. Um, Trevor Bins is up there. Daddy Trev, as it was uh, thrown out there before. George Buck, who got caught up there in that little wreck. Yeah, we'll see how, uh, how things go. One thing I will point out. We have about 10 drivers on the main lap, looks like. Yep, looks like 10 drivers on the main lap. As we go to our double wide here. front puff on the outside we typically see the outside line get a little bit better of a run off the line but we have that number 84 machine who up oh, 17 positions he would love to get a win in his first race max ford doing a great job sticking up front but gimon he's higher up than he normally is gimon's normally a middle of the pack runner David is doing fantastic today. Up oh, 12 spots into fourth. He's on the outside line. Noah Miller is going to be... He's going to push him hard. Going to push really hard to get this done and over with. Coming to the pit lane is the pace guard. Pace guard is going to jump on down. We're going to be on Max Ford. As he comes to the start zone. Green, green, green. 
Ford. And there he goes. Max Ford is off. He gets a good jump. Jumps to that high line for some reason. Maybe trying to break the toe of the 15 of Garrett Streets, but he is off and running. And Streets gets a, ooh, a little bump on that quarter panel. We're at two to go right now. Streets on the inside, giving a good push. Number three of Bins, and he is getting a good push from Noah Miller, who I told you was going to be in the mix of things. Miller getting a great push on Bins. We're going to be coming to the line here for our white flag. Bins out front. Noah Miller in second. Garrett Streets in third, and Streets is going to have to get a good push from Puff. And he does a little bit of a block there, but we have, oh, off goes Garrett Streets. We're on the last lap, so, oh, wow, what a defend there. Number 15, throwing the car in front, Garrett Streets. He's going to have number 11 coming up behind him, though. Streets going to have a run on Ford to the line. And there it is, Streets Ford. And there we go, Streets is off. Ford takes the win. Kreuzer in second, Streets comes across in third. George Buck in fourth. Joshua Smith in fifth. David Guimon in sixth. Joe Barry getting into it in the back. Trevor Bins, Noah Miller, and Chris Puff. Miller... Getting caught up. Max Ford takes the win here in the number 11 machine. And that is our Daytona opener of the Octane Outlaws Season 2. We'll see if Ford does some donuts here for us. What a race, what a race. There he is, a little bit of a little bit beat up there. Our camera is morphing through the wall. Fantastic race here for Max Ford. Doing a great job. Kreuzer coming across in second. Great job for the number 90 machine who hung in there up 11 spots from where he started. All right, let's take a quick look back here. We had the white flag. And then we had... This all happening. Let's see if we can't find where that happened. That little bump and then yeah, just cars flying on by. Gimon getting by the incident. He ends up finishing in sixth. Just by keeping himself alive. But yeah, that was quite aggressive at the end. Can we watch uh, Max Ford here. This is the action that we, uh, we didn't really miss it, but it was, you know, a lot of action going on all at once. Let's see. Ford gets up behind the number 15. And Ford tries to cut to the inside. Ooh, and he bumps that rear quarter panel of the number 15. Number 15 probably deserves that win. But Ford giving him a, a shunt... Right at the, the end there. Number 15 coming across at least in third. He had uh, George Buck chasing down, but Streets gets across just in time here. Whoa, yeah, and then gets a big hit from George Buck.
Yeah, wow, what a, uh, what a finish there. Try and see it live here. Or not live, but we'll try and see it in, uh, cockpit view. You can see he gets shoved down low. He gets, he gets that block from, from streets. But you can see he's holding in that draft, Max Ford. And wow, here he comes, here he comes. Tries to go high, gives him the fake, goes down low, and then yeah, actually 15 might have come down onto him a little bit, and he just takes the win. Wow, Ford Masterclass there. Let's pull him into our waiting room here. And we'll get an interview here with Mr. Ford. As we pop up our results tab here for the race. Let's pull him in. Max, do I got you down there in the number 11 machine? I got you. Awesome, awesome. Well, great win. Um, it was a little dicey there at the end, but, you know, you come away with the win. Um, beating out Garrett Streets there in the number 15 machine. Uh, great opening race for you for the Octane Outlaw Season 2. Um, coming to that last lap, what was going through your mind? Um, a lot going on up to that point, but it all comes down to that last one. What what was uh, your strategy uh, trying to get by uh, Garrett there at the end? Well, I don't even think I would win there because I had a uh, wheel damage from that last uh, restart or whatever. I don't even know what happened then, but I had wheel damage and my, my wheel was like not 90 degrees. I'd say like probably 50 degrees to go straight. So I was a little bit damaged there and my thing was a little down on power. So I was just... I was just hoping for anything, honestly. And then once the leaders wrecked, I was like, I actually have a shot. Uh, I came off two there, and he kind of just gave me, like, a dirty block. I didn't really, like, take – I just was a little mad after that and came down straight away. You know, I got my draft. Richard's behind me. He he honestly could have won there. He didn't bump me. But um, come off four, I knew wherever I go, he's just going to block. He doesn't really care if he's going to get wrecked or not. So then I just – I was just trying to make as many fake moves as I can to get to his inside. And once he just, he just started coming down, I throws on his inside and he wrecked himself. So yeah, yeah that, hope rose. that was a, uh, that was a chaotic finish for sure. We did see the, uh, the, you, you referred to it kind of as a dirty block. It was, it seemed like a very aggressive block from, uh, from streets, but yeah, we saw it at the end there. We watched it. Um, you know, slowed down and we see you do that, that little inside outside, where are you going? And then, you know, he just, it looks like he might've come down on your front right quarter panel a little bit. Um, and it just, you know, sent him flying. And yeah, I think you're right as well. Richard probably could have taken the win if he, uh, if he tried to make the move around you rather than try and push it a little bit. And yeah, it just, it was a great, great finish for the opening season or the opening uh, race of the season here. At Daytona, but uh, yeah. but yeah, it was uh, great watching. Hey, do you have any shout outs you want to give before I let you go celebrate? Uh, you know, shout out to Ford. I, I usually do this whenever I win. Shout out the uh, other manufacturer team because you know, my last name is Ford, and I'm driving a Chevy, so it kind of hurt their feelings. But hopefully, the uh, Ford family is still nice enough to support me. <laughs> Well, we will leave you to go celebrate. Great job again. Um, we will see you next week at, I believe we're racing at Sonoma Road Course. So um, we'll see you there and hopefully see you on the podium again. Yep. See you. All right. Let's bring Richard Kreuzer now into the booth. Richard, do I got you down there in the number 90 machine? Hey, yeah, buddy. How's it going? It's going well. Uh, great race. Uh, second place. Uh, best uh, best finish I think you've had so far in the Outlaws um, between the two seasons. But fantastic, fantastic way to get there. Uh, what was going through your mind as you came to that, that last lap of the race? Um, 
and you know with the the leaders kind of wrecking in front of you what was going through your mind um well i'd kind of uh this race i teamed up with tommy thompson and uh we had been running together uh pretty good and he got caught up in some wrecks so towards the end i really thought i had it um they it, my front end was damaged pretty good uh i was getting pretty loose so i ended up pushing him instead of going around him i should have tried going around him but woulda shoulda coulda so i mean it was it was a great race had some i you know ran in first for a while there and it was a fantastic start to season two yep yeah a lot of uh a lot of good finishes last season but none as good as this one um daytona is always a special one to you know to win but to get a podium as well is huge so congratulations on that um yeah, thank you and you have quite a bit of fan base out there in the chat you know saying go richard great job 90 um you know great to see that so you got some fans cheering you on anybody you want to give a shout out yeah. to um before i let you go and celebrate uh yeah uh, shout out to my mom love you mom uh my brother Luke uh, from Soap is Painting. Uh, I want to shout out uh, Tommy Thompson for helping me out with this race. And that just the admin team, Patrick and uh, Corey, and you. Uh, thank you for doing this. This has been some fa fantastic fun, and got to just keep her going. Yep, yeah, it is always fun covering the Octane Outlaws. Um, but we will let you go and celebrate, Richard. Um, congratulations again, and uh, we will see you next week at Sonoma. Yeah, sounds good. See you there. All right, let's bring our third place driver, uh, Garrett Streets, into the booth. Garrett, do I got you down in the number 15 machine? Yes, how you doing, Alex? How's it going, Garrett? Uh, third place finish here for you for the opening week at the Octane Outlaws Season 2. Um, coming to that last lap, how are you feeling? Uh, you We're up front, and we're having... Quite a fun time there, it seemed with uh, with the end, but uh, just you know, so close to getting that win. Yeah, um, for sure. Sorry, so, what, what was going through your mind as you came to that last lap? Uh, I had my teammate Chris in the eighty four. Um, initially coming to that restart, we were we were hoping that we could get teamed up and I could get behind him and push him, and then it just kind of didn't work out that way. I was then I was happy to have him behind me and we just kind of got shuffled up and got separated. And then he got into the accident. So I hated seeing that. And I had a big lead knew I was a sitting duck and, uh, got around turn two there and saw, um, saw the other guys coming and max coming. And, uh, I threw kind of a late block there. I didn't mean for it to be as late as it was. It didn't feel as late as it was in the car. So I apologize for that. But, um, I just, you know, knew I had to do something to not get absolutely freight trained and break his momentum. But, uh, yeah, we, it's kind of a typical Daytona last lap incident, free for all trying to get back to the start finish line, but I don't know what else we could have done. Hate to see that much carnage there at the end and not be able to race it out. But, uh, overall, uh, good end of the race. It was a fun end of the race. Uh, and, uh, we'll look forward to, uh, another good week next week. Yep. Yeah, I believe we're at Sonoma next week. So a little bit of a uh, shake up from, you know, restrictor plate racing. Uh, it's a, a big difference to go to a road course and, you know, be driving a completely different style of racing. So it will be a good shake up to see, uh, you know, some guys that can do, you know, this drafting racing and then seeing what everybody can do, um, you know, on, on the road course. So it will... Uh, It'll be a lot of fun. Anybody you want to shout out before I let you go, Garrett? Uh, yeah, I want to shout out to uh, uh, SM Racing Products. Shout out to Jeremy. He was in here. Um, Jeremy and I do a lot of stuff with uh, sm-racingproducts.com. If you're looking for uh, any sim racing hardware, we'd appreciate it if you went and checked us out. Um, I'd like to thank my chat. We're, we're live right now on, on TikTok, so I'd like to thank my chat for hanging out and everything like to thank you for doing the broadcast and then uh thank uh let's see who do we have we have patrick and we've got uh cory who are league admins correct so i'd like to appreciate all they do yep. or appreciate all that they do for putting this on and uh 
you know, I know that's a big task and everything, and we're glad to have guys like them that put everything together so we can have a good time. Yep. Yeah. Always a always a pleasure doing uh, work with with Patrick and Corey. They, uh, you know, they do a fantastic job putting on this league, and you know, successful first week. Uh, Twenty drivers out that will be uh, racing all season long, and you know some new names this season, some old names this season. So it will be a lot of fun to see how everybody uh, gets to start driving around each other, but I will let you go, Garrett. It was a a fantastic race to watch. We will see you again next week. And uh, hopefully we get to talk to you again on the podium. Hopefully so. We'll see you then. Thank you. Yep. All right. Here we are at the end of week one um, for Daytona octane outlaws season two. And we have, Max Ford taking our win. Richard Kreuzer taking second. Garrett Streets taking third. Uh, George Buck taking fourth. Joshua Smith taking fifth. David Guimont taking sixth. Joe Barry in seventh. Uh, Trevor Bins in eighth. No Miller in ninth. Chris, Chris Puff in tenth. Tommy Thompson in eleventh. Martin Roberg in twelfth. Corey Buchanan in thirteenth. Zachary Steele in fourteenth. Curtis Rogers in 15th, Doug Easel in 16th, Jason Heaney in 17th, Jeremy Morrow in 9th, bleh, Jeremy Morrow in 18th, Joshua O'Bar- O'Brien in 19th, and Michael Aldrich in 20th, and Jimmy Emos, who did not get out of the pits, uh, must have had some kind of issue with the start of the race, but that is it for us. We are all out of here, um, done and dusted for week one at the Octane Outlaws season two. We hope to see you guys next week at Sonoma, and once again, stay fast.